Well, hi there. Uh, today we're going to look at the task manager that I've created for Unity. Um, in uh, some of the newer versions of .NET, uh, there's a uh, task factory which is really, really useful. It's really nice to use. It comes with a lot of nice features. Uh, unfortunately, Mono doesn't support this version of .NET yet, so it's not available. So I tried to create something which mimicked the uh, task factory in .NET. Um, so you see it's on the asset store now, only $5, pretty good. Uh, so let's have a look at it. Um, so I've got an example scene set up here. You see here I've got a timer constantly running. So this is, so this we can use this to see when the uh, when the UI locks up. And we're going to be looking at two methods in particular. So I've got two methods here. Both of these methods are going to take a second to execute. You see that I'm just telling the thread to sleep for a second. Uh, one of them also takes the parameter and then doubles it and returns it. Um, so just to show you that it does lock up the UI and it's a uh, execute task that one take second I'm going to run this one here this one second task uh, but not using the thread manager so you can see here I just execute it there and you'll see everything lock up so you see there the timer locks up and there it's executed in one second we can execute again again the timer locks up and it's executed in around a second um, but we can use the task manager now and we can get we can run our own functions on a separate thread really nice and easy um, so again, I'm going to run the same one-second task. I've got that here, uh, but we're going to we're going to run it using the task manager. And so you see here, when it takes one second, nothing locks up, everything keeps on running, and again it executes in a second, just over a second for that one. Um, uh, yeah, uh, we can also run things in parallel. So here, I'm going to execute ten tasks. So if we have a look at this one, you see here, I've just set up a action array. Uh, with 10 elements and each of those elements I'm assigning to the one second task method and then I'm going to pass all these actions in and see it so if I execute 10 tasks that takes a second see there, they've all run in parallel and they've all executed in a second um, so you can run things in parallel, uh, parallel. Uh, and then this is uh, this last one is more an example of how I, I imagine it will actually get used um, it'll take a parameter you'll execute something and then eventually it will return it. So you see here we're just quadrupling it. Um, but if we have a look in the code, so we'll see how all this is done. Um, so for the first one, the one second task, uh, it's just start task. That's, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, but the union task manager provides this continue with method, which is really useful. This is what uh, the task factory in the later version of .NET has. It's so useful. Because um, you'll probably start a task and then you want to do something else once it's finished. But uh, in normal threading, it's quite it's quite annoying to actually find out when something finishes. Um, and then a lot of the time when it does finish as well, you'll probably want to update a variable on the main UI thread. Um, but again, because they uh, in the newer versions of .NET, with it has a dispatcher service, uh, Mono doesn't support that yet. And so I've created a dispatcher service here. Um, this dispatcher service, though, you do have to drag the prefab onto your scene. Um, don't worry if you drag the prefab into multiple scenes, it'll sort itself out and delete itself if it's not needed. Um, so you see here, we just continue with, uh, and again, now these just take actions. So you could pass another action, you could pass another method in if you've, here if you wanted to. I just prefer to use anonymous methods for these, I think it makes it a lot clearer. Um, and then so we're going to, once. so once we finish the one second task, we're going to say... Right, we want to stop the stopwatch. We're going to update the UI message, and we're also going to reset the stopwatch. And then all this will get executed on the main UI thread, so we don't have to worry about making any of these variables thread safe, uh, like message. See here, if I was accessing this from another thread, I'd have to make that thread safe. Uh, but since we're only ever going to access it from the main UI thread, it's fine. Uh, but you just have to make sure you call it from this dispatcher service. Um, so that's it for that one. You know, once the one second task is finished, we just uh, we just update the UI, um, and it's a similar concept for the ten tasks that we execute in parallel. Uh, we just pass them all in, and then we're, gonna, we're just going to continue with, and we're just going to tell the dispatcher service to update our UI. Um, now, this uh, where we quadruple a number. This is how I imagine we'll be more likely to actually use the task manager. I know this is um, when I was a .NET developer. This was a lot more along the lines of how we'd actually use it. Um, so you would have a method, and so see, you can pass in methods from other assemblies as well, and other, uh, and other plugins and things like that. You just have to make sure the thread's safe. These methods you pass in, and they're not, they're not uh, accessing any of Unity's API. Um, 
so you can see here we are going to pass in this method, this one second return. Uh, this takes an integer and it also returns an integer. So hence the two, the two ints there. Um, so we tell it the method, we tell it the number that we are wanting to pass into it. So this is from that text box here. So you see if we enter something that's not a number, say not a valid integer. Uh, but then when it is, it'll go off and execute it. And so I imagine that'll be most of how you're doing it. You probably want to run something where it'll be a dynamic variable. And so you might not want to know. So you can pass it in here. Uh, it comes with enough. Uh, I've made it so you can pass in functions which take a maximum of three parameters. Yeah, so it can also handle two parameters and one parameter. Um, but then once you've once this method is executed, you'll have the result. So you see here, this is our result integer from the one second return. And you're probably going to want to do something with this result. So you might have passed in a database call and you've been returned a bunch of data and then you need to pass it. And then what you do is you'd execute the pass in, in this bit. Because uh, before you reach the dispatcher service, all this stuff is still executed on a separate thread. So you're still not going to get a lockup, whatever you do here. So you see here, first one, passing the method. And I'm also going to execute the same method again, so it'll double. Whatever result we got, it'll double it again. Uh, so that's why it's called Drupal in it in total. And then once we've got the result, uh, we can update the message from our dispatcher service. Um, so that'll be quite similar to uh, how you'd want to use that, I imagine. And but in before it would just take so much effort to do it. And if you look at it, it's just a few lines of code now. And we're happily executing things on separate threads, and then we're happily using the dispatcher service. And then, so you see it won't just run one more time. So two seconds this is taking, because we're running that one second return method twice. And you can see that we're quadrupling it. Yeah, so uh, thanks for watching. It's available on the Asset Store now uh, for $5. I'll say the link is below. Thanks for watching.